begin the ninth chapter of the first flight. Madam rides the bus by Vali Kanan. Now, madam, can you see a cute little madam? She is the one. She takes a ride in the bus. Let's see how she enjoys it and most, uh, you know, first and foremost, how does she get onto it? So, yeah, before that, let's get to know about our author. Vali Kanan is the pseudonym of the famous writer R.S. Krishna Swami. Now, pseudonym is what? The pen name or fictitious name. That's not his real name. His real name was R.S. Krishna Swami. He was a famous Tamil writer, journalist, critic and translator. He started writing at a very young age and had published 25 books by the time he turned 30. So you can imagine he was 30 and he had already published 25 books. He wrote a total of 75 books in his life. He wrote novels, poetry collections, plays and essays. He was awarded the Sahitya Academy Award in 1978 for his critical works on modern Tamil poetry. So, moving to the plot, what is the story all about? Madam Rides the Bus, the cute little madam, is the story of an 8-year-old girl, Valley. She was wonderful girl. She was mature, clever, practical, and self-respecting beyond her age. Just imagine the qualities as per an 8-year-old girl. Standing in the front doorway and watching what was happening in the street was her favorite pastime. She was a great planner at the age of 8. She thriftily saved every penny that came her way for her first bus journey. Thriftily as in we every possible way in a very wise manner she did not spend money on anything and she saved every penny during her first bus journey valley was full of enthusiasm and excitement she enjoyed the landscape the canal palm trees distant mountains and green fields stretching out as far as her eyes could see she reacted strongly when she was called a child or madam. She did not like it when they called her a child or a madam. Someone called her out. The self-respecting girl refused to accept a free cold drink by the bus conductor. She planned her bus journey during the nap hours of her mother. Interestingly, her mother could never know of the bus journey her daughter undertook during her nap in the afternoon. So you see what a, I mean, what is like a super girl, I must call her at the age of eight. She is mature, she is clever, she is practical and self-respecting. It's a wonderful thing to be, meet such a girl. So let's see how she plays this, you know, uh, thing of her first bus journey, how she gets to it. Let's know it. There was a girl named Vali Amai who was always called Vali for short. She was 8 years old and very curious about things. Her favorite pastime was standing in, front, uh, in the front doorway of her house watching what was happening in the street outside. So she would stand at the doorway and from there she would watch everything that was going on around. There were no playmates of her own age on her street and this was all about she had to do. So she had no friends. She had nobody. So all that she could do was just stand and watch everyone. But that was her favorite pastime also. Because maybe just because friends are also not there. So that was the best thing she could do. But for Valley, standing at the front door was every bit as enjoyable as any of the elaborate games other children played. Which are the elaborate games involving many carefully arranged parts or details. So all those games what they played, they enjoyed with that. She got the same enjoyment. She was every bit as enjoyable as any of the elaborate games other children played. Watching the street gave her many new unusual experiences. Now see... Just standing there, now it all depends on what your focus is on. So she, she got all the unusual experiences. 
she kept track of different things she did not just see oh this one is dressed shabbily oh this one fell down and she would laugh that was not she saw remember she was a mature girl though she was only 8 she her focus was different just see what all the most fascinating thing of all was the bus that traveled between her village and the nearest town it passed through her street each hour once going to the town and once coming back now she kept track of that the sight of the bus filled each time with a new set of passengers was a source of unending joy for valley every time she saw a new set of passengers she would really like it she would enjoy that part day after day she watched the bus and gradually a tiny wish crept into her head and grew there so every day she would watch the passengers you know boarding and disembarking they would be all new people all the time and she would enjoy watching them but suddenly it so happened one fine day she just got that thing you know she got that wish that what if i could travel in that bus so that thing grew in her head she wanted to ride on that bus even if just once even it was just for once she wanted to experience it this wish became stronger and stronger until it was an overwhelming desire now the thing became stronger and stronger and now it was a very you know it was a great desire now for her it was in a big amount she really wanted to do it vali would stare wistfully at the people who got on or off the bus when it stopped at the street corner she would you know literally stare at them longingly she think wow they've gone and come i mean you know again she had the desire that she wants to do the same their faces would kindle in her longings kindle as in set a light and hear like feelings the feelings would come longing is hear an intense feeling or desire for something now that thing would come up to her inside again that strong feeling would come dreams and hopes just for that one bus journey just for that one bus ride imagine she had to wait that long she had to dream that long she had to plan that long if one of her friends happened to ride the bus and tried to describe the sights of the town to her valley would be too jealous to listen and would shout in english proud proud neither she nor her friends really understood the meaning of the word but they used it often as a slang expression of disapproval slang expression as an in informal words often used within a close group so she felt she said if at all one of my friends gets onto that bus and when they come back and they describe to me their journey what all they saw oh i would definitely be very jealous i would be upset and they called proud proud but they did not know what the meaning was right so she said i would have really you know been jealous to listen to that and i would have shouted proud proud not knowing the meaning of the word right so it's not the right word basically to use but yeah that was the slang expression of disapproval the friends used amongst themselves over many days and months valley listened carefully to conversations between her neighbors and people who regularly used the bus now she started now see this is the movement this is the initiation of the plan okay it started that seed has been sown in her head that she wants the ride now she wants to get the detail of the entire thing she cannot just board the bus she's just 8 years old so over many days and months she carefully used to listen to conversations between her neighbors and the people who regularly went in that bus and she also asked a few discreet questions here and there discreet as in careful questions she wanted to know every detail this way she picked up various small details about the bus journey all the details she found out the town was 6 miles from her village the fare was 30 paise one way which is almost nothing at all she heard one well dressed man say 
Now, one well-dressed man who could afford it, he says, oh, 30 paise is nothing. So that's okay. But to Valley, who scarcely saw that much money, from one month to the next, it seemed a fortune. Fortune as in surprisingly high price or amount of money. For her, it was big money. Even that 30 paise was a big sum for her. So she found out all that, that it is six miles from a village. The fare is 30 paise one way. So she would need 60 paise to go and come back. Right? So this is all she found out. The trip to the town took 45 minutes. On reaching the town, if she stayed in her seat and she paid another 30 paise, she could return home on the same bus. So she also found out that the bus takes 45 minutes. Okay, the trip to the town is 45. So you 45 to go and 45 to come back, right? And she felt that if I don't get off the bus, if I go in the bus, I'll be seated there only. I'll give another 30 paise to come back. This meant that she could take the one o'clock afternoon bus. Why? Reach the town at 1.45 and be back home by about 2.45. On and on went her thoughts as she calculated and recalculated, planned and replanned. Now, just see, she is calculating every minute. How long will it take to go? How far does it go? What is the cost? So you see all the details. Now, this can come as a two or a three mark question. So you need to know what all, how did she actually plan her first trip, her first trip in the bus? her first ride in the bus. So you have to know all this to write your answer. So if you know the main points, you can write it in the in your own words. So yes, she did a lot of calculation. Well, one fine spring day, the afternoon bus was just on the point of leaving the village and turning into the main highway when a small voice was heard shouting, stop the bus, stop the bus. And a tiny hand was raised command, commandingly. Now, here she, you know, it was one fine spring day. Finally, she made up her mind that she is going to board the bus. So, one fine spring day, as the bus was about to leave and, you know, get onto the highway, she screamed, stop the bus, stop the bus. And she waved her hand, you know, very commandingly. She said, stop it. The bus slowed down to a crawl. As in, it slowed down by a lot. It had taken speed, then it slowly became very slow. And the conductor, sticking his head out the door, said, Hurry then, tell whoever it is to come quickly. He says, Oh, someone wants to come. Send him, send him fast. Be f I mean, you know, it's really getting late. Let us move on. It's me, shouted Valley. I'm the one who wants to get on. He thought now this child will definitely not want to board the bus. So he thought she's, you know, stopping for somebody. So he tells her that, you know, send that person quickly. And she says, no, no, it's me only. I want to board the bus. By now, the bus had come to a stop. And the conductor said, oh, really? You don't say so. Says used to express amazement or disbelief. He was shocked. He says, you want to board the bus? Because she was a little tiny tot. She was just eight. So obviously, yes, I simply have to go to town, said Valley still standing outside the bus and here's my money. She was very innocent. She says, yes, I need to go to town. And she was still waiting outside the bus. She didn't board the bus. Before boarding the bus, she gives him the money. She says, here's my money. She showed him some coins. Okay, okay, but first you must get onto the bus. He says, get onto the bus, we need to move on, said the conductor. And he stretched out a hand to help her up. She was a tiny girl. So, you know, he gave her hand that come up and look at her self-respect. Never mind, she said, I can get on by myself. You don't have to help me. She's like, oh, oh, she's a great one. The madam. The conductor was a jolly sort, fond of joking. Jolly is in very happy, cheerful, lively and entertaining. So he was those types. Oh, please don't be angry with me, my fine madam, he said. Here, have a seat right up there in front. Everybody move aside, please. Make way for madam. So, you know, he's just trying to be good. 
I mean, she's such a small one and, you know, she says, oh, I can come up myself. So she, he's like, okay, madam, please make yourself comfortable. And he says, everyone, you know, just move aside, let her sit. He's making her sound big. It was the slack time of day. Now, one o'clock generally, nobody travels. The peak time is early morning. You know, when people go to work or evening or maybe, you know, the dusk time when the people are returning from work. But in the afternoons, it was empty. It was slack time as in a time when there is not much work. And there were only six or seven passengers on the bus. They were all looking at Valley and laughing with the conductor. They were like, wow, just look at the girl. And you know, they were just looking and laughing because even the conductor was making it nice and funny. Vali was overcome with shyness. She felt like, you know, everyone is looking at me and she was a little shy. Avoiding everyone's eyes, she walked quickly to an empty seat and sat down. She just looked around and everyone was making fun, you know, not making fun really, but they were laughing. And so quickly she finds an empty seat and she goes to sit down. May we start now, madam? The conductor asked, smiling, says, now that you have settled, can we start? Then he blew his whistle twice and the bus moved forward with a roar. So the journey set off. It was a new bus. It's outside painted a gleaming white with some green stripes along the sides. Inside, the overhead bars shone like silver. So it was a nice newly made up bus, very beautiful the way they described the bus. Directed in front of valley, above the windshield, there was a beautiful clock. The seats were soft and luxurious. So this is the description of the bus that she boarded. So yes, something for you to remember, because if at all you are asked, how was the bus and how, you know, what was the journey? So if you have a long answer, you know, you can put this a part of it, you know, depending on the uh, marks allotted to your question and of course the relevance. If it is relevant, go for it. Vali devoured everything with her eyes. She really consumed, swallowed or took in quickly and completely. She was like, wow. Remember, the first time she has boarded the bus, the first time she has everything in front of her eyes moving. When she started to look outside, she found her view cut off by a canvas blind that covered the lower part of her window. Now, a blind is a screen for a window, especially one on a roller or made of slates. Now, you know, you have that rolling thing. So that was actually blocking her view. You know, it covered the lower part of her window. So she stood up on the seat and peered over the blind. She's tiny, you know, where she has a height. So she stood up on the seat to look outside the window. The bus was now going along the bank of a canal. It was just crossing a canal. The road was very narrow. On one side, there was the canal and beyond it, palm trees, grassland, distant mountains and the blue, blue sky. It was a beautiful view that she could see. On the other side was a deep ditch and then acres and acres of green fields, green, 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 as far as the eye could see. As far as she could see, she could see green fields. Oh, it was all so wonderful. Yes, something for you to again, uh, don't memorize it, but yes, understand so that you can write what was, you know, what all did she see from the bus when she boarded the bus. So this is all she saw. That was the view she had. Suddenly, she was startled by a voice. Now she was so lost looking outside. Everything was so beautiful. She was totally, you know, uh, it was breathtaking. So she was lost over there. And suddenly a voice feeling of sudden shock or alarm. Suddenly there was a voice and she became, you know, she was startled. Listen, child, said the voice. You shouldn't stand like that. Sit down. Now someone came and said, you know, don't stand because if the bus gives a jerk, you will fall. So please sit down. Sitting down, she looked to see who had spoken. It was an elderly man who had honestly been concerned for her. 
worried, troubled or anxious. He was really worried. He says, if she, I mean, you know, again, the bus will give a break or a sudden, you know, this thing, she'll get a jerk or maybe it goes over a bump. He was actually concerned about her, but she was annoyed by his attention. She got angry. Why is he telling me this? There's nobody here who's a child, she said. Remember, she did not like it when someone called her a child or a madam. So she got a little upset because that's what he told her. Now, he was actually, he said, no, listen, child, he calls her. So she gets irritated. She was annoyed by his attention. There's nobody here who's a child, she said, haughtily. Haughtily as in proudly. Says, who's a child here? There's no child here. I've paid my 30 paise like everyone else. So I'm not a child. Even I have paid 30 paise. I'm not here for free. The conductor chimed in. He actually came in. He also got into the conversation with them. Oh, sir, but this is a very grown-up madam. Do you think a mere girl could pay her own fare and travel to the city all alone? Says, sir, do you think she's a small girl? No, she's a madam. She has paid me the money. She's paid the fare by herself and she's traveling to the town all by herself. There's nobody with her. No guardian, no parent. Valley shot an angry glance at the conductor and said, I am not a madam. Please remember that. And you've not yet given me my ticket. Says, whom are you calling a madam? I'm not a madam. There she tells him, I'm not a child. Here she says, I'm not a madam. Says, where is my ticket? You haven't even issued my ticket yet. I gave you the money. So see, she's very responsible. I remember the conductor said, mimicking her tone, copying, imitating her tone. The way she said it, he said it back in the same tone. Everyone laughed and gradually, Valley too joined in the laughter. Everyone gave a good laugh. And finally, even she started laughing with them. She was no longer upset. The conductor punched a ticket and handed it to her. Now, punched a ticket, you know, they make a hole in the ticket. Punch a hole in or otherwise mark one's ticket. Now, here it is for a bus to show they have paid the fare to ride. We are all aware of it, right? So, he punched the ticket and he handed it to her. Just sit back and make yourself comfortable. Why should you stand when you've paid for a seat? Says, why are you standing? You've paid. No, enjoy yourself. Be comfortable. Sit down. Because I want to, she answered, standing up again. She says, I want to stand. No, so it's okay for me. I want to do it. And again, she stands up. But if you stand on the seat, you may fall and hurt yourself when the bus makes a sharp turn or hits a bump. That's why we want you to sit down, child. Now he's explaining to her that why we are asking you to sit down. Says if the bus takes a sharp turn or it goes over a bump, then what will you do? You will fall down and you'll hurt yourself. So it's better you sit down. I'm not a child, I tell you. She said irritably, I'm eight years old. See, eight years old is not a child. I am not. Of course, of course. How stupid of me. Eight years, my. No, now he's pretending, say, Are, ha, it is eight years. How can I call her a child? The bus stopped. Some new passengers got on and the conductor got busy for a time. Now, many more passengers came. So, you know, he started giving them tickets. Afraid of losing her seat, Valley finally sat down. Now she got scared. More people are coming. And what if they sit down on her seat? So she quickly sat down. An elderly woman came and sat beside her. Are you all alone, dear? She asked Valley as the bus started again. Now that elderly woman sat and she saw nobody's around the child. So she's asking the child, are you all by yourself? Do you have someone with you or are you all alone? Valley found the woman absolutely repulsive. Repulsive as in causing strong dislike. She somehow did not like her. Such big holes she had in her ear lobes. In the earlobe, she had a very big hole and such ugly earrings in them. And she could smell the beetle nut the woman was chewing and see the beetle juice that was threatening to spill over her lips at any moment. Now she was munching pan, beetle leaf, that's pan. She was having, so she could feel, you know, the juice is somehow 
going to come out from the corner of her lips any moment. She somehow found her very repulsive. Ugh, who could be sociable with such a person? How can I be friendly to such a person? Yes, I'm traveling alone, she said curtly. Curtly as in showing displeasure. She said, yeah, I am traveling alone. And I've got a ticket too. She was very proud of the fact that she's traveling there with a ticket. Yes, she's on her way to town, said the conductor with a 30 paise ticket. Say she's here, you know, she's on her way to town and she has paid the entire money for the ticket. Oh, why don't you mind your own business, said Valley. She says, why don't you just mind your own business? I'm talking to her. But she laughed all the same and the conductor laughed too. Now they both, I mean, obviously, because even he was, she was equally joking with him and they both had a good laugh. But the old woman went on with her drivel. With her drivel as in her silly nonsense. Is it proper for such a young person to travel alone? You think, is it safe? Is it good for you to travel alone? Do you know exactly where you are going in town? Do you know where you have to go, where you are going to town, in the town where you have to go? What, what's the street? What's the house number? Do you have the entire address? You needn't bother about me. I can take care of myself, Valley said, turning her face towards the window and staring out. Now she was getting irritated. She says, you don't bother. Don't worry, I'll take care of myself. And she turns her face towards the window. Now that's how she saw that lady, you know, with the betel nut uh, in her mouth and the juice ready to fall. Her first journey. What careful, painstaking, elaborate plans she had had to make for it. Elaborate, painstaking, it is done with or employing great care and thoroughness. That much painstaking plans she had made. She had thriftily saved whatever stray coins came her way. Thriftily, she had spent money carefully. Extremely carefully, she had saved every penny. And whatever stray coins, coins without purpose, leftover change, all of them she went on collecting. And whatever stray coi coins came her way, resisting every temptation to buy peppermints, toys, balloons and the like. And finally, she had saved a total of 60 paise. So you see, she had saved every penny, all the stray coins, whichever coins were left around, she had collected those. She spent money very carefully. She did not uselessly spend it. She didn't even buy peppermints, toys, balloons and any other thing which a child would want to buy. So you see, every drop of penny, like I mean, I must say every penny that she saved made it 60 paise. How difficult it had been particularly that day at the village fair, but she had resolutely stifled a strong desire to ride the merry-go-round even though she had the money. Now, she had been to the village fair. Children enjoy. They go on the merry-go-round, they eat sweets, they eat so many things, they play so many games, they buy toys, but she was suppressed or she controlled with determination. She says, no, I have to go for the bus ride. So I will not spend the money here. So you see, she had thriftily saved it. She did not. There was a strong desire to ride the merry-go-round even though she had the money. She could have gone. She had the money. But no, because of that strong desire of boarding the bus for the first uh, you know, bus journey, she didn't want to spend. She saved every penny of it. After she had enough money saved, her next problem was how to slip out of the house without her mother's knowledge. Now, she wanted to do this and I mean do this and so that her mother doesn't know. She should not come to know that she is going on the bus. See, no parent would allow an eight-year-old girl to go alone in the bus all the way from the village to the town and back. Nobody would have allowed but she was very strong about it. But she managed this without too much difficulty. How? Every day after lunch, her mother would nap from about 1 to 4 or so. 3 hours she would go to sleep. Valley always used these hours for her excursions. 
excursions as in short journey or trip, especially one taken as a leisure activity. So she would use that time for her excursions. She would move out. As she stood looking from the doorway of her house or sometimes even ventured out into the village, she went cautiously or courageously into the village. Today, these same hours could be used for her first excursion outside the village. Now, she was so smart. She used to use those, you know, three hours when her mom used to go to sleep. She would venture out into the village. You know, she would look around. She would do things. But this time, she would do the same thing, but she wouldn't be in the village. She would be going outside the village. She would be heading to town. So that was the time she had calculated. The bus rolled on, now cutting across a bare landscape, now rushing through a tiny hamlet. Hamlet is a small settlement or past an odd wayside shop. So all this, you know, she was coming across while the bus was moving. Sometimes the bus seemed on the point of gobbling up another vehicle that was coming towards them. Gobbling as in eating something hurriedly. Now generally, you know, when you're sitting and she was sitting in the front. So when you're sitting in the bus and you see a car coming, you feel it's going to bang. But the driver knows very well how to turn, when to stop. So she could feel that the bus is going to gobble them up, right? Another vehicle that was coming, you know, uh, towards them or a pedestrian crossing the road, even a person crossing the road, she could feel, oh, the bus is going to bang into that person. But lo, somehow it passed on smoothly, leaving all the obstacles safely behind. She saw, she said, oh, the bus is going so smooth, the journey is very nice, no issues. Trees came running past them. They were running towards them, you know. So when you go, you know, you can see the trees running. So as she went, the trees were coming. So she was feeling the, run the trees are running towards them. But then stopped as the bus reached them and simply stood there helpless for a moment by the side of the road before rushing away in the other direction. So how she describes the trees, she feels the bus is moving and if the tree is far, you can feel the trees coming towards you. But the moment the bus nears it, it came to there, you could see the tree stop and it was helpless, it wouldn't move. It was the bus that would go and then that would be in the other direction. That's how she describes the trees, what she saw. Suddenly, Valley clapped her hands with glee. She was happy. A young cow tail high in the air, was running very fast, right in the middle of the road, right in front of the bus. Now suddenly she starts jumping. I mean, she was ultimately an eight-year-old child. So, you know, when she sees such things, she feels happy. So she started clapping with happiness and out of excitement. So there was a little cow, you know, with the tail in the air and running right in front of the bus. The bus slowed to a crawl. It quickly slowed down. Obviously, the bus driver knew that the cow was there, so he wouldn't want to hurt the cow. And the driver sounded his horn loudly again and again. He kept honking. But the more he honked, the more frightened the animal became and the faster it galloped, always right in front of the bus. Now, that little cow did not know, you know, what was happening. That sound was scaring the cow. And somehow it, you know, galloped way faster. But again, it was in front of the bus only. Galloped as in proceeded at greater speed. Somehow, this was very funny to Valley. She laughed and laughed until there were tears in her eyes. She found this episode really good. She was so happy. She, she laughed so much that she had tears in her eyes. Hey, lady. Haven't you laughed enough? Called the conductor. Better save some for tomorrow. He's telling, oh, haven't you ever laughed? Look at the way you are laughing. Oh my God. Save some for tomorrow. You Tomorrow also you can laugh. Don't just laugh it out all now. At last the cow moved off the road. And soon the bus came to a railroad crossing. Now finally after all the honking, the cow went off the road and soon the bus came to a railroad crossing. You know, you have this railroad where the bus has to stop till the train passes. A speck of a train could be seen in the distance. Speck of as in appearing as a tiny dot. You know, when the train is really very far away, you can see like a dot coming and then gradually you can see the whole thing up. So yeah, 
in the distance growing bigger and bigger as it drew near as it started coming near it became it started looking bigger then it rushed past the crossing gate with a tremendous roar and rattle shaking the bus so you know when the train passes you know everything starts vibrating everything starts shaking so yes it passed the crossing gate with a tremendous roar it was a loud noise yeah and rattle rattle is what rapid short sharp sounds you know the noise of the train how it goes right shaking the bus there were vibrations there were literally the train was trembling because <laughs> that's shivering for a human but yeah it was shaking then the bus went on and passed the train station the bus went on and then it passed the train station from there it traversed a busy well laid out shopping street traversed as in travel across or through so it went through a very busy well laid out shopping street and turning entered a wider thoroughfare so as it turned it entered a wider busy public road thoroughfare it turned and then there was a it was a busy public road such big bright looking shops now she used to be in a village so for her it was wow it was like such beautiful amazing you know well lit shops were there they were also bright looking with nice you know uh, you have all the clothes hanging out the mannequins and all those shops so the display was very good what glittering displays of clothes and other merchandise such big crowds other merchandise as in things for sale many other things were on display there were shops of different different varieties so whatever display they had was amazing colorful bright it was glittering it was shining and of course there was a lot of a lot of people over there struck dumb with wonder can't speak due to shock she was like wow that poor girl 8 years old she has only seen the village so when she stepped out of the village remember for the first time so this was all alien to her it was all new to her she was struck with wonder she was literally deaf uh, dumb she had nothing to speak valley gaped at everything she was like you know she was like that then the bus stopped and everyone got off except valley so finally the bus reached the destination everybody got down but valley valley did not get down remember she was supposed to give another 30 paise and go back in the same bus to her house hey lady said the conductor aren't you ready to get off this is as far as your 30 paise takes you so now the conductor is saying hey not aren't you going to get down everybody has gone you supposed to get down your ticket was still here the 30 paise you paid for the ticket the ticket is valid till this destination No, Valley said, "I am going back on the same bus." She took another thirty paise from her pocket and handed the coins to the conductor. She says, "No, I am not getting off. I am going back home in the same bus." Why is something the matter? He is wondering. He says, "Why? Why would you want to do that? Don't you want to go down and look around things?" No, nothing's the matter. I just felt like having a bus ride that's all she says it's nothing absolutely nothing it's just that i wanted to enjoy this bus ride so i came don't you want to have a look at the sights now that you're here he says oh i understand but now that you have reached here don't you want to look around this beautiful place don't you want to get down and see them all by myself oh i'd be much too afraid she says no i'm alone i wouldn't do that Greatly amused by the girl's way of speaking, the conductor said, "But you weren't afraid to come in the bus. Since you got into the bus easily, you were not afraid then. Then why are you afraid to go down?" "Nothing to be afraid about that," she she answered. "Since sitting in the bus is not a problem, I just sat and I'll go back. So nothing can happen to me. So I'm fine in the bus." "Well then, why not go to that stall over there and have something to drink?" nothing to be afraid of about that either he says okay at least you can go there to that stall go get yourself a drink i mean you know she was traveling in the afternoon so he says go get yourself something to drink and it's not a problem to go from here to there go get your drink and come back oh no i couldn't do that she says no 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 i will not get off the bus i am okay here only well then let me bring you a cold drink 
He says, he was feeling bad for her. So he says, okay, let me buy you. Let me get for you a drink. No, I don't have enough money. Just give me my ticket. That's all. She says, no, I don't have the money to buy the drink. And oh, please do one thing. Just give me my ticket. That's it. It'll be my treat and not cost you anything. So he, she's a small child. So the conductor said, don't worry. I am treating you. You take a drink and you feel good. It, you don't have to pay for it. No, no, she said firmly, please, no. She says, nothing doing. I don't want it. Thank you so much. The conductor shrugged. He just did this, you know, raised one's shoulders slightly and momentarily to express doubt, ignorance or indifference. He just did this, you know, when you do that, that's a shrug. So the, the conductor shrugged and they waited until it was time for the bus to begin the return journey. The, immediately the bus doesn't go now after some time after more people must have boarded then the bus will start again there weren't many passengers it was afternoon time not many people you know really would travel at that point of time won't your mother be looking for you the conductor asked when he gave the girl her ticket you are here with us so don't you think your mother is going to search you at home she's going to look for you no no one will be looking for me she said she said no 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 Everything has been taken care of. No one will be looking for me. The bus started and again, there were the same wonderful sights. Valley wasn't bored in the slightest and greeted everything with the same excitement she had felt the first time. So while she was going back, the scenes were all the same. But yet, her excitement was equally the same when she saw it when she was traveling the first time when she was going so while returning also she had the same level of excitement she was enjoying all the same suddenly she saw a young cow lying dead by the roadside just where it had been struck by some fast moving vehicle suddenly she saw a cow a you know the little young cow she saw lying dead across the road and as though, you know, it had been hit by a vehicle, a fast moving vehicle had hit the cow. Isn't that the same cow that ran in front of the bus on our trip to town? She asked the conductor. She says, hey, doesn't, isn't that the same cow which was in front of our bus and the driver kept honking? Is that the same cow when, you know, we were going to the city? The conductor nodded and she was overcome with sadness. He said, yes, that's the same cow. She was feeling bad about it. What had been a lovable, beautiful creature just a little while ago had now suddenly lost its charm and its life and looked so horrible, so frightening as it lay there, legs spread eagled, a fixed stare in its lifeless eyes, blood all over. Now, she was very sad about the fact that this is so bad. A little while ago, it was so beautiful. It was lovable. It was galloping in front of the bus. You know, it was looking so nice. And now suddenly everything is gone. It has lost its charm. The life, it's dead. It's gone, right? It looked so horrible. Why? Because, the you know, it lay there with the legs uh, spread eagle. Spread eagle doesn't spread out, right? A fixed stare in its lifeless eyes. The eyes were like lifeless. There, it, was, it had not been shut also. And there was blood all over. So it was a very horrible sight to look at. The bus moved on. The memory of the dead cow haunted her. Returned repeatedly to her mind. It was impossible to forget. She was feeling very bad. Again and again that same picture, that same thought was coming in her mind dampening her enthusiasm that enthusiasm she had went low because that because of the sadness she no longer wanted to look out the window she didn't she, she didn't feel like doing that now because every time she looked she remembered the cow she sat thus glued to her seat not moving from a place as if stuck with glue it was as though you know she was stuck with gum like fevicol so she just stayed there on her seat until the bus reached her village at 3 40. Remember exactly the time she had calculated. So the same time the bus reached her village. She stood up and stretched herself. Now she had a nice long journey. So she took a nice stretch. Then she turned to the conductor and said, Well, sir, I hope to see you soon again. 
Wow. She was like, I hope to see you again. And, you know, let's hope it's really fast. Okay, madam. He answered her, smiling. Whenever you feel like a bus ride, come and join us. And don't forget to bring your fare. Your fare as in the money for the ticket. She laughed and jumped down from the bus. Then away she went, running straight for home. Immediately she headed home. When she entered her house, she found her mother awake and talking to one of Valley's aunts, the one from South Street. Oh my God. Now this is something which got miscalculated. She knew that mom would be asleep and before she wakes up, I will come. But to her bad luck, her mother was awake and she was talking to one of Valley's aunts who lived South Street. It was just down there. This aunt was a real chatterbox. Continuously blah, blah, blah. Never closing her mouth once she started talking. It was a never ending story. And where have you been, said her aunt, when Valley came in. She spoke very casually, not expecting a reply. She just casually spoke. So Valley just smiled and her mother and aunt went on with their conversation. She just casually, oh, where did you go? And you know, they were talking continuously. So it didn't really matter. And Valley just smiled and moved on. Yes, you are right, her mother said. So many things in our midst and in the world outside, many things in our midst as in where we are and plus in the world outside, so many things are happening. How can we possibly know about everything? You think it's really possible to know? And even when we do, not, when we do know about something, we often can't understand it completely, can we? Says even if we get to know something, can we really understand that whole episode? Do we understand the whole thing? No, it's really not possible, can we? Oh yes, breathed Valley. She says, of course. What? Asked her mother. What's that you say? How can you say that? Oh, said Valley. I was just agreeing with what you said about things happening without our knowledge. Do you see what she's trying to hint her here? <laughs> to her knowledge, to her mom's knowledge, she had gone to the town and come back. She wasn't aware. The mother wasn't aware. So she says, yes. I was just agreeing with what you said about things happening without our knowledge. So what had happened? She had gone to the town without the mom's knowledge. Just a chit of a girl she is, said her aunt. An immature girl. She's tiny. She's small. She's just eight years. So anything comes from them. And yet look how she pokes her nose into our conversation. Just as though she were a grown lady. How she pokes her nose as in takes an interest in something that doesn't concern her. Now they were talking. She had nothing to say in between. But she poked her nose. She interfered. So as though she's, you know, a big grown up lady the way she's talking to us. Wally smiled to herself. She didn't want them to understand her smile. But then there wasn't much chance of that was there. She says she did not understand, she did not, her smile was a little naughty one. She smiled to herself, but her mom and her aunt did not understand what was the thing behind her smile. She says there was less of a chance. There wasn't even much of a chance for them to know was there. So yeah, she succeeded in taking her first ride without the knowledge of her mom and very well calculated, very well planned and that, you know, that earnest desire that she had to go and actually enjoy that ride, go and look at the town the other side. She finally completed it somehow trying to save all the money. So yes, the world is a book and those who do not travel read only a page. Saint Augustine. Very well said. Says, if you know, the whole world is actually a book. And if you do not travel, you have gone through only one page of the book. That's it. The remaining pages, the remaining part of the world is yet there for you to explore. So yes, I hope you all have good travel plans. And that does not mean without the knowledge of your mother. Now here, it's a different story. It was a story. For you, it's practical. But yes, I hope you all have amazing plans, lots of different ways. But yes, write, I mean, 
if you talk of these days you can even explore on the net so it's not necessary there are places where you may never be able to reach but it's not that we don't we cannot experience them but yes we can experience them digitally can't we yes so yes i hope you keep exploring keep getting a lot of rich knowledge and equipping yourself and more when you keep watching more such videos so keep watching and keep learning